D on the beats. Yo, Noble Middle School. You know who it is. That's right, Godfather of Field Day. And I'm back at it, like I never left it. So let's get it. 2019, I'm back on the scene. Fine tuning this Field Day machine. Call me Vanilla Gleam. My lyrics are sweet and clean. Noble's got the best field day that anybody's ever seen. The competition is homeroom versus homeroom. If you wanna win them all, you better bring a broom. But if you ain't prepared, it'll be doom and gloom, son. The ground will catch your tears. The sky will hold your cheers. We've been doing this for ten long years. And it's field day. We don't play, we don't play, it's field day. We don't play, we don't play, it's field day. We don't play, we don't play, we don't play when it comes to field day. Hello? Yeah, it's me. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm just here writing rhymes for my SoundCloud. SoundCloud. I know how old I am. Why do you ask that question? Anyways, listen. Everyone has a SoundCloud. Middle school, high school, college. Everybody. If you don't have a SoundCloud, you got nothing. Look, I know what's around the corner. I know what's happening next week. It's field day. Why do you think I'm working on my SoundCloud? I'm writing a rap song. Rap song. Yes, I want to make sure it's on lockdown. I know how old I am. Listen, I'm, a, I'm, I'm writing a rap song about field day. I just finished up the first part. It's fantastic. Best thing ever. Okay, Vanilla Ice called said, you're the greatest. Hello? All right. So, I want to run some lyrics by you. Yeah, lyrics, check it out. The next part I want to talk about the weather because it's probably going to be hot. So I'm thinking it's going to be hot like school tater tots. Hello? You there? Okay, good. All right. Then another part, if somebody's doing bad on the field, I'm thinking, ooh, you're doing bad like mixing Coca-Cola and Lysol. Hello? You still there? Yes. Yeah, these are real lyrics. I'm going to write them down and record them and put them on SoundCloud. What do you mean I shouldn't? If I don't do it, somebody else will. Fine, I'll just, fine. I will just let somebody else put these lyrics out on SoundCloud and then they'll get all the followers. Thanks a lot for the support. You're right, I should start the video. You know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Tell me I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the rules, I'm gonna talk about some points, and then I'm gonna keep talking because apparently that's all I do. Hello, you still there? Okay, good. Attitude, you got the attitude. Listen. I don't have time for this, okay? I'm gonna start the video right now. Yeah, love you too, mom. Bye. All right, so, if I'm gonna talk about the rules, it's gotta go like this. Rule number one, you gotta have fun. Easy. Rule number two is you gotta have shoes. I'm so good at this. But they gotta be closed toe shoes. No sandals, no flips, no flops, no cleats, we know that. Rule number three, you better respect the boundary. Oh, genius. All right, homeroom's got a certain spot you gotta stay in. Don't you move around, don't go meandering and messing up other people's business. Rule number four, don't be sore. So no arguing, things don't go your way, just focus on the next game. It's pretty good. Number five, keep sportsmanship alive. No cheating, play the game straight up and fair. Pure, I like that. Rule number six, Pick up sticks and pick up everything else. Don't leave any trash behind. Help us out. All right, we know the rules. Now we got to talk about points because you play in these crazy games, you want to win some points. If you get first place in an event, you get 10 points. Second place will get you seven. Third place, we're giving you five. And if you get fourth place and on, you get three points. Teachers, you love to play in these games too, so you get bonus points if you participate with your students. We're gonna limit you to two events but for each participation, you get three bonus points, maximum of six points. Whoever has the most points is gonna be overall champion. I could talk about how great field day is forever, but you don't have to take my word for it. Stand um, favorite trophy, obviously, for me, it has to be the tug of war. War, so it's intense. I get a little fired up. I expect my, my warriors to come through in the big pool. So, you want to see me really carrying on like a fool? 
come see me during tug of war. I, I really loved the, the overall trophy that we won last year. We were the, uh, the Rainbow Space Cats, and uh, it, it was a tie, but, but we won the overall trophy. I loved it very, very much. Um, I, unfortunately, it was in a spot of honor on my desk, and um, I backed into it and, and broke it. Um, but I, I believe it's, it's being repaired to its former grandeur. I love the Spirit Award because I think that embodies everything that we're about here at Noble is representing our school and representing team. So I think Spirit Award is the best. I would have to say my favorite trophy is the Chuck Norris uh, Spirit Award. Um, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Hands down. Best one. Seventh grade. I don't think we'll have it anymore. My favorite trophy is formerly a social studies project that is supposed to be, I think, an Egyptian lady, an Egyptian figure, but I determined a few years ago that it's actually Michael Jackson. I like it because I feel like the eyes watch me when I walk around my room. That's my favorite. And uh, I like planning the grand entrance, and you know, every year is special and, and fun and exciting. My favorite field day memory is that moment that we walked out on the field when we were Mustin's Mario Kart. We had some kid down on the field with a trombone, and he just sounded off with the theme song. And we all came running down with scooters and bikes, and we had big boxes, and we were throwing banana peels, and just had the best time ever and Mazalia Festival when we came out as parade floats. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Field Day is a great time. We've had a fun time with our home rooms and of course winning the tug of war was fantastic as was winning overall last year. I don't know if it was great but one of the memories that stands out was hitting Coach Galloway with a bucket of water after the feet water bucket challenge. Any trash talk between classes? No. Well, last no, nope, we're good sports. We never trash talk ever. Oh well, yes, of yeah. course. Uh, obviously, we're we're gonna defeat Coach Charles Henry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, we are. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Full support, all around. Uh, the only trash talk I have is from Kieber. You're going down this year. I think Miss Blail has a tendency to trash talk a little bit. Mm, there is no need for trash talk when you uh, have this kind of record. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there are two more that haven't been printed yet from last year. Primarily against Hicks. Um, we always get on Hicks um, because has he ever won anything? I don't think so. Uh, so. We like to rub it into Hicks and uh, it'll continue for years to come. We're here. We're here. Quick, quick, bring the questions. This man is elusive. Oh, man. Do y'all know who this is? This is Mr. Hicks. Uh oh. Mr. Hicks, uh -huh. we want to ask some field day questions. Oh, man. Okay, All right, here, slide in there. Uh, who's that? All right, so. And it's off the cuff. You just you just fire fire out some okay. answers here. Do you have a favorite trophy? I, I don't own a trophy. Uh, you have to win something to get a trophy, and uh, I don't have one. Any great field day memories or stories? Again, back to the trophy. Uh, uh, I, I got a Gatorade one time. So yeah, that, that was good. Any trash talk between classes? Uh, well, again, in order to trash talk, you have to win, and um, it wouldn't really benefit me too much to talk trash. So. Do you have a favorite game? Oh, yeah, the uh, the bridge one. Yeah, yeah, we've won that a few times, uh, but that was like uh, 1990, no, 2008, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Is this almost over? Because I'm feeling pain. <laughs> Has teacher participation changed in the years? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
there has been some participation, uh, but uh, I, I, I didn't think it would help. Um, I, 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 yeah. All right, ask him if he's going to make a, a team flag this year. Are you going to make a team flag this year? Yeah, I got the flag ready. I'm going to use this 3 by 5 card that I have with a pencil because that's how spirit is displayed at Noble. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time. And here we have Peas in a Pod, our first game for Field Day 2019. This is a classic now that has been around for a few years. You're going to need six players. The objective is to use noodles and collect and carry dodgeballs across the field. Key rules to remember, your hands must remain on marked areas. Only the noodles can touch dodgeballs, and dodgeballs must always be carried, never thrown. As we load up our demonstration, you see the teams run across the field. Scooping up that first one is always easy. A nice little taste of success in this first game. Once you get back to your teams though, you gotta hand off the noodles, maintain possession of the dodgeball, and then go back and pick up the second. This is where things get a little tricky. This team across the field, they had the second dodgeball, but they lost it, go back to get it. Please make sure that you're keeping an eye on your hand placement, because if you are carrying the noodles in a way where your hands are not properly placed, a judge will stop you and hold you for three seconds. So make sure you have everything lined up like you should. This team here making good progress. They're over here picking up the third. Notice the hands. We're going to make an adjustment. Good job. Now they've got their third and final dodgeball picked up. They're carrying it across the field. Once they get across the cone, everybody's going to sit down. The dodgeballs stay in order. Flag goes up and we have a winner. All right, we've got the sponge bucket, a classic for any field day, but this year we're calling it back to back. You got six players, and the objective is to move the most water across the field within the set time limit. Only connected players can move sponges across the field. If you drop a sponge, make sure you go back and get it before moving forward, and then you can squeeze water from your clothing if you still have the sponge at your destination bucket. So as we load up the demonstration video, you see we are connected, interlocked arms. We are going back to back. This is how we're moving the sponge across the field. Once you get the sponge across the field to your bucket, remove it and squeeze out as much water as you can. Run back across the field, soak up the sponge, give it to the next group. They place it between their backs and they gotta move it across the field. This is tricky because you're trying to get as much water as you can across the field and moving and jostling, jarring, you're losing water so you're trying to be quick. You want to be safe, you got to stay connected. You only got three minutes to do this, so once you get there, get as much water as you can out of there. Once the time's up, everybody freezes, we're going to weigh the buckets and the team that moved the most will be the winner. Alright, the 4 by one this one is a quick hitter, something that's only going to take a short amount of time. you got four players. You're trying to complete one lap around the football field. The top times are going to get the top points. Don't throw the batons. Don't run without a baton. Look out for each other. Your four players are going to be positioned across the field at four separate corners. The first one is a long run down the sideline. Once you get that clean handoff, you got a short sprint across the end line. And then you got another long sideline. And as you finish up, it is a mad dash to the finish line. 
trying to get the best time possible. Okay, here we are, Hungry Hippos, the children's game that everybody loves. We've come up with a modification, a crazy variation for field day. Four players going to the field, and they're going to tag up in wheelbarrow fashion, and they're going to try and gather as many of the numbered balls that are assigned to their team as possible. They're going to be wheelbarrowing around the field, picking up these balls, putting them in baskets. Make sure that you're only collecting your team's number. The balls on the field are going to be numbered, they're going to be, they're going to be labeled, so make sure you're going for the correct ones. As you're going through this, be strategic because this does require a lot of muscular strength and endurance. Two minutes. Two minutes is what we're going for here. And if you notice here, we have a yellow ball in play. The yellow ball is worth two points. Everything else on the field is one. So once that yellow ball is picked up, it is out of play and whoever gets it gets that bonus point. As you're going through, stay connected. You're going to see some illegal tactics right here. Watch this. Illegal. You separated from your, your tag team partner. Uh, if a judge sees that on field day, they will assess a three second penalty with you. Shut you down for three seconds. As you go about, again, you're picking up your team's numbers. Each homeroom has a set number and there are 10 total for each homeroom. As the countdown goes, 30 seconds or so, we will shout it out and you need to start heading back to the cone. If you are left in the field, if you're not at your cone, your points will not count. So make sure you get back to your cone. The judges will check to see that you have all the correct numbers. If you do not have the correct numbers, then we will assess a penalty. We will throw one of your good ones out. So please make sure you're following the rules, paying attention, and hopefully having a great time playing Hungry Hungry Hippos. Alright, here we have the Limbo. This is a classic at any field day or good old-fashioned party. You're going to send two players. It can be two boys, two girls, one boy, one girl. It doesn't matter. They're going to bend backwards and move under the Limbo bar. No twisting or turning while you're moving under the bar. No touching the bar, touching the ground. We're going to have one overall winner. In the past, there have been uh, two winners, one for boys, one for girls. This year, we're going with one overall winner. So it doesn't matter who you send, we're just going to have one champion when it's all said and done. As you watch here, they're all going under the bar. Once they begin that backward bend, they got to be moving forward. They cannot twist to the side. They can't, they can't change their direction. As we're getting into the final rounds here of our demonstration, we get two people to go through clean. And then here you start to see that twist to the side. No good, you're out. This guy right here, watch this, he doesn't stand a chance. Oh, good night. He's down and out. All right, the final two here, they're going for it. You, you start getting this low, you gotta think, oh, gravity, yeah, gravity gets you. All right, don't celebrate too soon, you still gotta get under. Last participant here, if she clears it, she's winner. And that's exactly what she does, limbo. Everybody loves it. All right, here it is, Rock Tree Bridge, Mr. Hicks's favorite game. You got 10 players. They're going to the field and they're going to build a human obstacle course. As you set up this obstacle course, it's important to remember you're setting up obstacles on designated marks. And we're only going to build one obstacle at a time. So as the first one goes out, it's going to be a rock. Once that rock is set, the next person goes out, builds a tree. Once that tree is set, you go over the rock, around the tree, and you set up the bridge. That's the first rotation. And we're going to do that again. We're going under the bridge, we set up the rock. Next one will be a tree, then a bridge, the pattern goes. Please make sure you're not leaving your starting point until the obstacle in front of you is set. If a judge sees two people moving at the same time, they're going to stop you and give you a three second penalty. And that's going to be serious. It's going to be very severe in this game. Once you have three rotations of Rock Tree Bridge set up, the final person will be able to go. What am I pointing at? Oh, they were out of line. There we go. Please make sure you're at the right spot. So here we go. Looks like you know, we got one more going. And as again with other games, you need to be strategic about who's going when. Because the person running that last part, that tenth person, as we see on the right side of the screen, they're making their final run. This is a run that takes some endurance. You gotta do a lot of different physical movements. Make sure you go around the cone. 
Once you go around the cone, you gotta go back through, under the bridge, around the tree, over rocks. Here we go, look at this. I mean, this is one of the greatest displays of athleticism that you could ever find. And then once you're done, sit down, raise that flag, you are a champion. All right, here we have Jump the Creek. It is the oldest game in our field day history. This game has been around since the beginning of time, basically. And you're gonna send two players, one boy and one girl to the field. The objective here is very simple. You wanna jump across the creek and stay in the game as long as possible. As long as you don't touch the ropes, as long as you make it across both ropes, you are still in it to win it. As the game goes on, the creek, of course, is going to get wider. The ropes will begin to have some more distance between them, which means it'll become more difficult to clear both. If you step in the middle, you step on the rope, whether it's the first rope or the second rope, then you will be out of the game. For this demonstration purpose, we have boys and girls going together, but on field day, we will have two separate games, and we will have a winner for the boys game, and we will have a winner for the girls game. So as we finish up here, you see splish, and you see a little bit of splash, and for the demonstration, we have one overall winner, successfully clearing Eagle Creek, and that's how it's done for Jump the Creek. All right, this game made its debut in 2018. It's back now, the Barefoot Bucket Balance Challenge. Four players working together to balance a bucket of water and removing their shoes. Seventh grade, eighth grade, you gotta take your shoes off and then put them back on. Sixth grade, you only have to take your shoes off to win the game. Upper grade levels here, more challenging. Once the buckets are set, everything is hands off. You cannot touch the buckets with your hands. If you see people reaching for the buckets with their hands in this demonstration, it's because we, we were reminding them to protect themselves in case the bucket did fall. But if a judge sees you touching the bucket with your hands, they will come by and give you a penalty. As you're going through this, notice the skills. You gotta have muscular strength, you gotta have endurance, but also an underrated skill here is communication. I don't normally like to give out strategy, but if you're not talking, if you're not communicating, something bad's gonna happen. Probably right about here. There. Splash down. I think that deserves instant replay. Let's go for it. There it is, slow motion, tipsy, turvy, and done. All right, if, if my daughter Egg was watching, she'd say, pranked you. She'd think that was funny. That this was like an intentional prank that somebody pulled on you. But now we have one team left here in the demonstration video. They, they are very close to getting all shoes off. The judge now is going to awkwardly walk in and say, yes, all shoes are off. There it is. Here's a point. Survivor style. Thank you. All right, back to it. Now the shoes have to go back on. More strategy. When you're taking your shoes off, how far are you going to throw them? not too far if you want to make sure you can put them back on. So now with the magic of editing we have kind of fast forwarded things and now we're in the final stages. The bucket took a, a slip there, almost went down, but they've done a great job here. A lot of endurance, a lot of frustrations, but they were able to, to make everything happen. We've got like one shoe left here. And once that goes on, judge comes in, saves the day. Oh. Barefoot Bucket Balance Challenge, successful. All right, good old basket flip. This one was inspired by the bottle flip that was so popular way back when. You got four players and the goal is simple. You got a ball in your basket, you're trying to flip the basket, get it to land upright with the ball staying inside. As you're going through this, you get your, your, your attempt here with the first few players. Wait for your person to tag you before you start running. If we see two people moving at the same time, we're gonna stop you for three seconds as a penalty. Here we see our first completion. On the far side there, no completions. This is one that, you know, you start thinking about strategy of how fast you're spinning, how high you're throwing the basket. Sometimes it's about, you know, a little bit of luck. Maybe it's the wind, or maybe you just get a lucky bounce like that, and you're off and running. On the far side there, take a look. That's two in a row. 
Are we going to get three in a row? You know we can. Can we make it four? Oh my goodness gracious, to the final basket. Oh, no good, so close. Back to the line you go. These two teams here are neck and neck. So, so exciting, so intense. Couldn't get it to happen, neither one. All right, this is our final run. You gotta get back, wait for the tag. There you go. Here we go. Who's gonna get it? It's gonna be left or right. You choose, it's left. And wave the flag and you are done. Congratulations, basket flip. This is the final challenge of Field Day. This game has created legends for our district. This game combines your mental strength and your physical endurance. I'm talking, of course, about de-scrambled. As your host, I've learned from some of the greats. Jeff Probst of Survivor, Julie Chen of Big Brother, and Kirk Fogg of I don't remember what he was about, but he was great. And I know that at this point, we need to set the stage for the final challenge of field day. And it's gonna be very important that you're not off tune as you try to complete this task. And as I stand here and talk about it, perhaps a greater symbol would be a demonstration video. So let's go to that. All right, so here it is, the demonstration of Descrambled. And I don't even know if I would call this a demonstration. This is more like a tribute. And one of the first things you notice here in the middle of the field is four players holding a rope. And their job is to hold that rope and figure out the best way to move letters across the field. As judges, we're going to be watching to make sure that you only have one letter on your rope at a time. If you have two or more letters, that is a penalty. We're gonna stop your progress, take the letters off your rope, and that would be disastrous for your team. That would almost feel like a rebellion of sorts. As you take note, also, there are two other players. Their job is to deliver letters to the rope and also retrieve letters from the rope. And for the demonstration here, everything is smaller. The field is smaller, the number of letters uh, is fewer than what you will experience on field day. So it's much easier in the demonstration video. Be prepared to run a lot if you are on those end positions, running or retrieving letters from the rope. Once you have that final letter on the rope, you have to wait until it is dropped in the bucket before you can move down and begin to try and descramble the phrase. Once you have all the letters across the field, you run and you begin to spell out what you think the mystery phrase is. Each grade level has their own mystery phrase, so there's no chance of trickery or shenanigans. And as you watch here, communication is key. People say, how, do, how can we be successful? Uh, basically, it's not about one person. It's really just about a village, people. Uh, you gotta work together. And once you have it, there it is, demo time. Uh, you could possibly win first place. Best of luck to you. Be ready. Pay attention. All right, here we have the sixth grade tug of war tournament. Opening round matchup, we have Miss Miller taking on Mr. Hicks. Across the board, we've got Miss Adam taking on Miss Moore. In the bottom part of the bracket, we've got Holden taking on Miss Livingston, I presume. And the final matchup for the first round will be Miss Godwin taking on Miss Perdome. The four homerooms receiving a first round bye are Miss Lane and Miss Rogers, the co champions from last year, Miss Gabriel, the reigning tug of war champion, and of course, the GOAT, Coach Shaw. All right, it's now time for the seventh grade bracket tug of war tournament. Here we go, first round matchup. We've got Church versus Waring. Across the board, we've got McKinley versus Playo. Bottom of the bracket, first round action, we've got Cray versus Keegan. And our final first round matchup, it's gonna be Mr. Garrett saying, hi, how are you?" to Miss McKeever. And the two homerooms receiving a first round bye are Miss Morgan and Dr. Hoffman. 
It's going to be a lot of exciting action. We can't wait to see what happens on field day. Best of luck to all teams. And here we have the 8th grade tug of war tournament. Tough matchups all around here. First one though is Miss McPherson taking on Miss Mazelia. Across the board we're going to have Miss Cox taking on Miss Mustin. The bottom of the bracket we got the overall reigning champ, Mr. Rogers, welcoming the newcomer Miss Bear. And the final first round matchup, it's a teacher of the year showdown as Miss Matthews will take on Miss Kevitz. And three teams getting a first round bye. Miss Davis, the reigning tug of war champion, Miss Yarborough, and Miss Zay. Best of luck to all teams. It is always a fantastic tournament with eighth grade, and we can't wait to see what develops.